and welcome to this week's episode of Real Hope Conversations. I'm your host, Abby McFarlane, and I am so looking forward to diving deeper with you on this topic of service and hospitality. And I am so thankful to be joined by Druvi Pereira. Druvi, thanks so much for joining me today on the episode. Hi, Abby, and hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be back again. So, Druvi, a lot of people may not know you. You work behind the scenes here at Hope, but you are one of our regular devotional contributors. Can you just share for those who are watching or listening a little bit about who you are? I know you love this question so much. (laughs) Oh, well, Abby, as you said, I work here for Hope. I love it. It's been an amazing uh, journey. Uh, I have a young family, three boys, Mm -hmm. seven, five and one. Dominic, Callum and Eli, so life is full. Uh, I'm married to the beautiful Anita and uh, yeah, honestly, uh, my family is my biggest success. I always say that uh, it is a pleasure uh, to lead them through Mm -hmm. the ups and downs of life. Mm -hmm. Challenging, yeah, 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 as as you would know as well, but uh, a little bit of who I am as well. And I'm part of our local church, been in leadership uh, for a number of years. Uh, was in ministry for a number of years, and I'm endeavoring to continue to follow the plan and call of God in my life. Yeah, um, yeah. I came from a engineering professional background, and I left all of that in order to uh, follow this call of God in my life. So that's a little bit of an introduction of who I am. So just you know, your average kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You and I were joking earlier that uh, I feel like I've been fashioned by fire, you know, and uh, the challenges that I've had uh, and the part that I've taken yeah. has been really unique. Yeah. Uh, you know, gr- I grew up in Sri Lanka, uh, never thought I'd left, leave there, you know, studied here in Sydney, never thought I'd, I'd be in ministry, but yeah. left my engineering career. So lots of uh, twists and turns and Um, Really some amazing God moments and God incidences and God's provision um, to get to this point. Uh, I I can't uh, take any credit for it. I have thrown the blueprint of life out the window because, you know, there's this part that everyone's supposed to take. And I stopped taking that part over 10 years ago. Wow. And, um, you know, so now the rest is up to him. I just try and follow and obey day by day. That's awesome. And that's so encouraging to hear because I think that's what this podcast is all about, is about learning and growing from one another as we journey together on this crazy ride that is being followers of Christ. And I love that, yeah, your story is a challenge to us all about really thinking about what is important in our lives and how we want to live our lives and reflect it out there into the world as we're journeying through. So I love that you're here. I love that you're a part of our devotional contributors. And I'm particularly excited to be talking to you about this topic of service and hospitality as part of one of our three-part series looking at the intersection of faith and culture. And I think that as society grows and as our world changes, as we encounter different aspects of the world, there is this really interesting cross-section where our faith meets culture. And sometimes it clashes, let's be honest, um, But sometime, and we need to figure out how to live our lives as Christians in a world that does not understand us mm. or who we are or why we do the things that we do. Mm. And so I'm so glad to be talking to you about not only this topic, but specifically really drilling into service and hospitality. For you, first question, how do you think the world views service and hospitality? I think it's underrated. Yeah. Um, I think in a world where people are maybe predominantly thinking about themselves, thinking about getting ahead, um, serving someone else or being hospitable to someone else is really underrated. Uh, We don't value it as much, uh, but its impact can be quite profound. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know whether you've ever been to uh, an environment or a home. I was thinking about this earlier and you've walked in and uh, the people who own the home or who are running the party or just this big smile mm-hmm. and warm welcoming and a big hug and come and sit and you you automatically 
feel this sense of, oh, wow, this is amazing. You feel loved, mm-hmm. you feel welcome, you feel at ease. Um, and so I think those type of uh, feelings and emotions are, are really important and valuable. Yeah. And the opposite is also true, right? Yeah. Where you go into a place and you, you know you're not fully welcome or you're trying to tiptoe or you, you're not sure what to say or what to do. Yeah. And there's a big contrast there. Yeah. And I think in life as well, if we can live with a posture of uh, that hospitality and that openness, mm. I feel like it'll actually help people and yeah. help people in a significant way. Yeah. I certainly feel like in the world when you say the word, you know, service, I think people automatically go to servant or like it, it's a chore. It's not something that we should want to do is to serve other people. Um, but then I also think when we think hospitality from a non-Christian standpoint, I think people automatically go to the hospitality industry, right? Sure. And I think that there is a view possibly that in the hospitality industry, like it's not, you don't really want to be working in the hospitality industry. Like it's, that's not where you make a career. That's Mm. not where you make success. But actually from a Christian standpoint, we're called into service and hospitality. We're called to live lives of hospitality to those around us. How do you think that to a secular non-Christian world, um, Christian hospitality and service is viewed? I think it's uh, viewed, uh, my personal opinion is yeah. I think it's viewed with a bit of, bit of stigma, a mm. bit of, oh, wh- why are you doing that? Or, hey, why should I be doing that? You know, mm. it's it's viewed maybe even with a bit of uh, skepticism yeah. because why is that person laying down their life or laying down their own desires and wants mm. to serve someone else? Um, Jesus was the ultimate model yeah. of this, right? Numerous stories of him serving his community, washing the disciples' feet, uh, you know, uh, meeting uh, uh, the lady at the well, the Samaritan lady mm. at the well. He was serving these people in a way, um, even though he was, um, you know, fully God made fully man. Yeah. He didn't assume that position of power and authority where he came to serve. Uh, and I think when you lay down that authority and serve someone else, there's something amazing that happens mm-hmm. within you. Mm -hmm. as well as the other person. And I've seen that transformation happen time and time again. Um, An example would be when uh, a number of years ago, and maybe we spoke about this earlier as well, I was running our outreach ministry through our local church, and we used to go to uh, some of the most underprivileged areas in Sydney and some of the quite dangerous as well. And we used to serve these people pretty much practical support, helping them with their laundry or their gardens or the elderly, people who who didn't have a great uh, grasp of English, helping them with their documentation and things Mm -hmm. like that. And we used to always go with the posture of serving. Uh, But the amount that we received back was tremendous. We always felt more blessed than we gave. And that was the overwhelming response from uh, the teams I was leading at that time. They always say, oh, wow, we've given, but we feel so blessed. And I think in that interaction, in that exchange, something takes place uh, that blesses both parties and that helps both parties. I certainly agree with that. I think from my um, background is I spent a lot of years in international development and Um, one of the questions that I always got asked is we would be working in these um, developing nations in the most, you know, poor communities that I've ever seen before and you'd come in and you'd give them something simple as I remember giving somebody a bar of soap and it was this, why are you doing this for me? Mm -hmm. I don't understand why you're doing this for me. Like I, why? Mm -hmm. And it actually led to conversation about, well, actually I'm doing this because you're not alone, you are valued, you are seen and you are loved and you're loved by God. And it led to a conversation, but just that simple uh, process or that simple interaction with that person gave, like you said, gave so much to me, but also opened the doors for me to actually minister to them Mm. in a way that I would never have had the opportunity to had I not first served and actually gotten onto their level I think that's the other thing it's it's me coming down onto somebody else's level and seeing them for who they really are as well 
yes, yeah, it's, it's just meeting someone where they're at. Yeah. You know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not just a handout. It's, yeah. Hey, you know, we're here with you. We want to help you. Yeah. We want to lift you up. We want to try and support you the best we can. And so, um, you know, it's not from this high position that you do it, but yeah. a position of we're coming alongside of you. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it, you know, uh, and that's the beauty of this story that we be- that we believe that Jesus he left yeah. his high position came down to earth you know came back to humanity as a man yeah uh, and why he didn't have to but so that he could serve us a- and show us a better way that's that's my personal belief and, yeah and I think the scriptures and uh, uh, allude to that as well you know and they serve they serve as a reminder that hey we're actually called to serve one another and that's yeah. not easy uh, in yeah. in the everyday interactions <laughs> in the in the meetings in the boardrooms or in in the in the classrooms in the conversations that's not easy yeah. uh, i'm not saying it is uh, and i think there are times and places that we can do it and we can do it well and other times it, it's much harder uh, but i guess we've got to try in, yeah. yeah to some extent yeah yeah so as Christians living in a broken world, what are th- what it should be our motivation for service? I think it's because it's what Jesus modeled. Yeah, I really think so. As you know, yeah. he he, you know, even in the scripture, it was uh, talking about Matthew twenty. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the disciples were having this this argument about who's the greatest, and yeah. you know, who's going to sit to the left and the right of you, Jesus, when your kingdom comes, and. And he said, don't lord it over the people that you have in authority like the Gentiles do. But the greatest of you will be the least. Yeah. You know, the greatest of you is the one who serves. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, that's a tough act to follow. Yeah. But, you know, that's a tough act to follow because Jesus laid down his life for us. Yeah. Uh, to serve us. You yeah. Know? And so, um, yeah. It's really seeking to be more like him. And in doing so, you know, he was the ultimate servant he came and laid down his life so that we could have a relationship with him and he served us in that act and I guess it's as we seek to be more like him seeking Mm. this is a characteristic of Jesus Christ so as we're going out into the world a world that is broken and doesn't understand Mm. the gospel and the saving grace that we have this is the way that we can yeah. share that gospel yeah 100 percent. and i think even you know just to make it very real because this is a real hope yeah. devotional <laughs> sorry i had to get that one in there um you know in your in your in your day-to-day with if i bring my example of my family and my wife and my kids mm. there are opportunities where i can serve them you know sure what, what do you mean talking about serving your kids it's like oh no i even if i wanted to do something like say go fishing Abby for the whole weekend <laughs> um you know I I can choose not to do that because yeah. I know that hey I need to spend some time with my eldest because he needs a bit of uh, help or a bit of time or a bit of you know I need to take him to soccer practice and things like that. for me that is serving you know yeah. I'm putting other people in front of me or you know recently I was chatting to my wife Anita and I felt like she needed some time and and we needed to be together so you know I decided hey I said can I can I work from home and you know yeah. help her and be there with her and support her and so those are I think they're simple and they're small they're every yeah. day uh, but they make a big difference at the end of the day yeah they do yeah, yeah. So that service, hospitality, right, is a whole nother thing. For you, what does hospitality mean? I think it means um, being willing to be hospitable, obviously, yeah. but also it's this, hey, what does that person need? So, for example, if you look at a, so take, take a party, for example, mm-hmm. right? Uh, someone who is the host has thought of everything that the guests would need, you know, whether yeah. it's the food, whether it's the where they sit, uh, you know, where would they have conversations, the water, the drinks. So being hospitable means preempting or pre-thinking of what someone else might need yeah. and having those things in place. That's, I, yeah. I feel like, you yeah. know, that would be a hospitable yeah. person, you know. Yeah. And and some people are naturally gifted at that. Yeah. Uh, I would say that I'm not. Uh, I would say that I've had to learn that over the years yeah. and I've been around people who are and who are generous and, and, and kind and, and just live big lives by opening yeah. their homes and their lives to people. And uh, 
I wasn't that wasn't modeled to me when I was growing up but I've had to learn that over uh, a period of a number of years and I'm getting better at it I'm not the expert at it I'm getting better at it but I've seen a lot of fruit in doing that and yeah. opening your life and being hospitable to others yeah, yeah. You talk about this in your devotional that you wrote um, this week. And again, you, and as you mentioned, you looked at Matthew 20. Um, and I really loved what you said um, in the devotional. In today's individualistic and polarizing world, living with open hearts and homes may seem old school. But when Jesus walked this earth, earth, he welcomed people into his world. His hospitality and service shocked so-called spiritual leaders of the time and cost him his life. And I think, again, it brings it back to Jesus Christ so, so much. But I think you've touched on something that opening homes and being hospi- hospitable mm. in a individualistic world can seem old school or weird or why would you be inviting me into your home for dinner or to have a cup of coffee? What has your experience been with hospitality in terms of opening your home or inviting people into your world? My experience has been that our lives as a result has only become richer and fuller. Yeah. Uh, it takes time uh, and you've got to do it with wisdom. Yeah, uh, You don't let everyone else anyone into your home sorry pardon me yeah. you don't let anyone into your home because obviously we've got young kids yeah. and you know there are there are certain uh, safety measures and precautions there but you let the right people in yeah and as a result our lives have gotten uh, much bigger and much better we've built really uh, deep friendships and mm. deep connections they're not just shallow uh, and people come in and out of your life for various seasons but yeah. I, I find that those that we've let in that we've done bit bit of life with you know they've come with us on whether it's family holidays or going to the park or it's not just a, a casual interaction yeah. it's hey let's let's do a bit of life together let's really yeah. figure out who you are and how we can help you and let's do this journey of life together um, those relationships are the ones that have lasted you know and mm-hmm. they're the, they're the still the same connections that we have today those are those yeah. are the people that we still t- stay in touch with today I would like to say to anyone who is listening and maybe you've got a bit of uh, life experience, maybe you've got a bit of, uh, you know, spiritual battles that you've fought and overcome, um, don't keep it to yourself. Yeah. There are so many people out there that need it. There yeah. are um, young people, younger people, and they are trying to navigate this journey of life and mm-hmm. faith. They get so many things thrown at them. Maybe they, all they need is, uh, you know, to sit at your dining table and listen to your stories, listen yeah. to your stories of faith, listen to your, how you've navigated life and how, how God's been good to you and how God's maneuvered you through certain seasons. Maybe that's what they need to hear. Yeah. You, know? you obviously use wisdom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I feel like there are, there's a lot of gold in people and we tend to value maybe the instant or the instagrammable or the likable um these days but i feel like there's real real strength in longevity in faithfulness um and yeah if that is something on your heart please if you uh, open your home and your life to people and you will find that it's it's a it's as i said earlier it will bless you as well as it will bless someone else yeah I find that my eight-year-old son is probably more hospitable than me. He's, I don't know, maybe it's the, I have a filter of the world, but he is, Mm. mum, can this person come over for lunch? Or mum, can these people come over for dinner? Or mum, can we go out with that family? When are we going to do the thing with these people? Can my Mm. friends come over? Like it's pushing me, his young innocent but beautiful heart and perspective on the world and perspective on connection and deep relationships with people is challenging me as somebody who struggles with hospitality to think about hospitality in a more real way and find opportunities for us as a family to really display um, hospitality not just with our Christian, uh, like our church family, Mm -hmm. but with um, our school family or with our extracurricular activity family. I am not somebody that I have my people and I I struggle (laughs) meeting new people. I'm an introvert when it comes to that, whereas my kids are forcing me to actually 
meet new people and it is it's there's mm. a richness to those relationships yeah there's a comfort there is i think we learn and we grow together once we open our world up to other people 100 percent, 100 percent. and he, i was laughing as you say that because i was just having the same conversation with dominic two days ago uh we had to drop him off at, at them off at our neighbors because the time anita had to stay back and yeah. i had to leave the house so they were there for about 15 minutes or so and you know we've got a great relationship with them uh, and then every day since then, can I go over? Can I go over? Can I go? I was like, no, Dominic, there's maybe you're not welcome. Can I go over? Can I go over? And I, I love that you said that because uh, kids are not tainted by yeah. this world and, and maybe what we should and shouldn't do. But again, I find um, those intersections, those places where we open up our lives mm -hmm. or our homes is actually mutually beneficial for both yeah. parties. You know, both, you know, my neighbors are like, oh, they were such a delight. It was so good to have yeah. them. It was great to have a bit of life in the house. And, you know, they were able to play different games and because their world's very different. Yeah. They've got adult children. So they don't. So I feel like we've got these uh, preconceived ideas in our mind yeah. about, you know, oh, we're being a burden or, you know, oh, maybe that's not helpful to them yeah but i find both parties are blessed you know yeah again with the with the right wisdom yeah again a wisdom yeah. right people you know that come up along your path um and i would say to to anyone who's who's listening and and maybe you're going oh i, I need i need some of that oh I, you know I, i'm looking at that person and that person's life has a lot of fruit i want to be like that yeah take take some courage you know yeah. muster it up Walk up to them and say, "Hey, can I can I take you out for a coffee, or can I can I take you out yeah. for a meal, or hey, you know, when would you like to catch up?" And sometimes you may find that as you take that first step, that they will reciprocate that. Yeah. And then it'll be a, a lifelong friendship, you yeah. know. Uh, 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 and you don't have to be in the same age group or demographic. Uh, I think sometimes when there's a bit of distance between, you know, your where you're at and maybe the journey that other person's been, you know, yeah. they're, they're ahead of you in the journey. There's a lot of growing, a lot of learning to do yeah. in that space. So, yeah, I guess if you're a younger person or even if you're an older person, you're looking at someone, you're going, hey, I, I really love their life, what they're doing, the fruit of their life. Just go up to them and say, yeah. hey, can I take you up for a coffee, you know, or whatever, wh yeah. whatever, you, you know, whatever yeah. that works for you. Um, and uh, yeah, see where that leads you. And yeah. the worst thing that I could say is no. I think that's the thing. That's probably a phrase that I have now in yeah. my 30s. The worst <laughs> thing that they can say is no. Yeah. yeah. Because at the end of the day, if they say no, that's fine. Yep. Yeah. It is what it is. Yep. Yeah. But I think it's this, I think you've touched on something, right? The courage to put, to openly go out there mm. and have the small potential of rejection because let's be honest, most people are looking for connection. They're looking for a relationship. They're looking for people to do life with. Mm. So there's a very small possibility that they will say no. Yeah. But just maybe, yeah. just maybe they'll say yes and that starts a whole lifelong journey with somebody. Mm. And if it's somebody that isn't a believer, isn't part of a church family, that's an opportunity for you to deepen a relationship with somebody that doesn't know God and also be Jesus Christ mm. to them in mm. the moments that they need and plant those seeds for them so that maybe when they are going through a tough season, yeah. the person that they turn to is you to help them through that. Mm. And I think that's what journeying through life with people, Christian and non-Christian, yeah. is all about. Totally. I think you said that really well, though. Thanks, Ruby. Oh, <laughs> tick that off. I'm doing my hosting duties well. Um, so for those people who are listening or watching to this and are still grappling with service and hospitality or maybe, like me, service and hospitality doesn't come naturally, um, what would you say to them to encourage them as they're thinking through this topic? I think I would say just have a go. Yeah. You know, have a go. Don't. There's no, you're not going to fail so miserably that you won't be able to pick it, pick it back up. You know, yeah. um, I've learned it over the years and I'm still learning it over the years. Yeah. And, you know, and just know that you have something to give, that people want to actually spend some time with you and learn from you and be around you. Because even if you feel like it's a tiny bit, that bit is what uh, someone else may need in that yeah. season, you know, and don't be afraid. 
Uh, yeah. yeah. And obviously with this global pandemic and all of the other things that are, it's been hard over the last two years to build these type of deep relationships uh, and, and be service, yeah. uh, you know, serve somebody else and be hospitable. Uh, but I feel like, you know, let's let's start shifting it. You know, let's start going back to who and what we're really called to be. You yeah. know, we're not called to do this life on our own. We're called no. to try and help other people uh, along the journey. Mm. And sometimes it's clunky. You know, it's and honestly, it's the first few times is going to be awkward. You <laughs> it's know, gonna be it's really going to be really uncomfortable. But keep at it. Yeah. Um, and as I wrote, I feel like people's over time, the, the walls come down. You know, yeah. trust gets built up, and on that foundation you can have some proper deep and meaningful conversations and do life together you know so keep at it just have a go i know it it sounds simple have a go yeah if you fail a few times it's okay you know get back up and and just trust that the right people will come along your way you know druvi as always i love sitting down with you and i love journeying with you and Anita and your boys Um, certainly I learn so much from you and I hope that as people are listening that they've also learned and drawn from your wisdom and your experiences with service and hospitality because that's what it's all about like we've said it's about journeying together and doing life together If you have been watching this and this has been an episode that has challenged you or you have more questions about service or hospitality, we would love to hear from you. You can go down into the show notes or the description and there'll be a link there for you to get in touch with the Real Hope team. We would love to be journeying with you directly um, as we're seeking to live a life that is a beacon of light of Jesus Christ in the world that we live around us. Also, don't forget, if you want to be alerted to whenever there is a new episode of Real Hope Conversations, don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And as we've been talking about, this whole podcast is about journeying together as we seek to understand and know God better. So what better way than to be inviting other people into the conversation by sharing this podcast episode or video with your friends and family on social media or via message or email. We would love to be journeying with as many people as possible as we seek to share experiences of God's love around the world, in our communities, in our families, in our nation and in our world. Well, I hope that you have an amazing week this week and I'm really looking forward to seeing you here next week for the next episode of Real Hope Conversations where we'll continue to look at this topic of the intersection of faith and culture. I'll see you here next week.